You know what it means to follow God? What, mean, what it means to follow God is that you're willing to get outside of your own comfort zone for God. If you're not walking outside of your comfort zone, you're not serving God, you're serving yourself. The flesh always wants to walk in its comfort zone. It's very easy to sit on the, t sit on the couch or the, or the sofa and watch TV. It feels good. It's very easy to sit down and drink a couple glasses of wine and, 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 and do this every day and do nothing with your life. Very easy. It's comfortable. It feels good. Very easy to keep eating and eating and eating till you get fat and not work out. It feels really good. Nobody wants to wake up and work out in the morning. It feels good to just relax. That's your comfort zone. How many Christians are living within their comfort zone? It's so easy to allocate one and a half hours on Sunday morning from 11 o'clock to 1230 to go to church and you clock it out, clock it in, clock it out like, like your workplace. You spend more time at work than you do at church. You would spend eight hours, 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week, uh, three hours travel every single day to go to work. But yet you're watching the clock when it comes to God. You're watching your clock when you go to church. The pastor preaches too long. It's beyond 20 minutes. The pastor came an hour late. Listen to me. A lot of you have come late so long, so many times to work, and you're still not fired. You can't even wait on God sometimes. You pray, oh, I give up on God because he didn't save my marriage. You only pray for one minute, uh, one day. You haven't even fasted and prayed for your husband. You haven't even fasted and prayed for your parents, your wife, and yet you're giving up already. You know why? Because everybody loves to live in their comfort zone. It's not, it's, not, it's not comfortable to wait. It's not comfortable to serve. It's not comfortable to go outside of the comfort zone and, and, and to give God a little more time. It's not comfortable to pray on your knees. It's not comfortable to spend an hour in the presence of God and to someone you can't see and you haven't seen. It's not comfortable to wait until you hear the voice of God. It's not comfortable to reach out to people that are a different color skin than you, a different socioeconomic class than you. It's not comfortable. It's scary. It's different. But yet Jesus Christ was of a totally different socioeconomic class than every single one of you. He was the king of kings, and he decided to become a lowly slave all for you and for me. He didn't care how poor you were. He didn't care how wretched you were. He didn't care how messed up you were. Some of you think that Jesus only came for the Assyrian. You have churches where everybody's Assyrian. You have churches that everybody's only Arabic. You have churches that are only Pacific Islanders. You have churches that are only white. Well, guess what? Jesus was none of you. He was a Jew, and yet this Jew came down to die for everybody, Gentile, every type of race, Chinese, everybody. And in the kingdom of heaven, there's not going to be these separations that you have here on earth. But you like it to be comfortable, don't you? You want to sing how everybody else sings. You want, you, want, you want to be around people that look like you, talk like you, have the same language as you. What was the point? Of you, of you leaving your, your country where everybody spoke the same language to come to another country where they speak the same, a different language just for you to speak the other language from your country. You might as well go back to where you came from. But you came here, so you might as well reach to the people here. Oh, but, 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 but no, I only care about my own. Well, guess what? God cares about his own as well. He said there's many sheep that are not yet here, but they're also a part of my community. You must go and preach the world in all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you, because at the end of the day, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God chose the Jews for a reason, to be the light to the Gentiles, but they decided to hoard the, the gospel, the good things to themselves, thinking that they were better than everybody else. I'm not going to tell them about the gospel. Jonah didn't want to tell the Ninevites about the gospel because he looked at the Ninevites and said, these Ninevites are wicked. You don't know what they've done in the past. I don't want to reach out to them. They hurt me. I don't know what they have done to you or the other nation has done to you, but I can tell you what we've done to God. You know what we've done to God? We've rebelled against God. We've destroyed God's creation. We've destroyed everything that God uh, wanted for us, even our own lives. We were supposed to reflect the glory of God.